Hey, I'm Andrew from Azito. We're here to make a light box, which is really cool for the photography enthusiast or to sell stuff online. We'll need a few tools for this. They're all powered by the one battery. So we'll need a circuit saw, a jigsaw, impact driver, drill driver, sander, and a really cool LED light to light it up at the end. We'll need some MDF board, which I picked up at the local Bunnings. And we'll need a few other accessories, which you can find the full list on our website. So first of all, we'll need to do a bit of measuring. We've picked up this piece of MDF which is 900 by 450. You can make this light box any size you like, of course. We'll need to find the middle of this, and that's fairly simple by just going half of 900 is 450. Then we'll need a straight edge, which I've got a piece of timber here that I know is a straight edge. We'll now be using a circular saw to cut this, line it up with the notch in the base plate, and if we're happy, we'll go ahead and cut. So we've got three pieces of 900 by 450, we've cut it three times, so now we have six pieces at 450 square. Whatever the thickness of your MDF is, you need to double that because we're going to measure this. So this is 16 mil MDF, so I need to make a mark here at 32 mil, which is two times 16, and draw myself a nice line across there with my homemade straight edge. That's the piece we're going to cut off. In order to do this, we have a straight cut guide that comes with our circular saw, and it just goes in the front here, if you've ever wondered what that one was. That will also assist us to ensure we cut straight across all the way there. And we're ready to cut. We have a nice, perfect, straight piece of MDF there that we'll use later on to support our lid. Out of those six pieces we have, we're only gonna use five. So you need four that are exactly the same. And the fifth one will be the back wall. Stand everything up. Now we need some nice big clamps. One clamp at the back of the box, like this not fully tightened up because then we can adjust our walls and our sides. Can't leave the clamps on, so now we're gonna put some screws in this one. MDF's a fairly hard material, so if I want the screws to be flush with the timber, I'll use a countersinking bit. Create a little countersink there in all those spots. Okay, so we've marked all those off. Countersinking bit can change. And I like to do pilot holes when I'm working with MDF. Pilot hole's just a hole to guide the screw to where it's got to go. So I'm using a three mil bit here. Now it's time to move on to the impact driver. So now that side's stuck on real good. All you need to do is do it on the other side here and then do some around the base as well. So replicate that on all sides, put as many screws in as you like, just remember to pilot hole and countersink. We'll need a lid on the top here and it's going to be on a hinge. So in order for it to stop falling through here, we're going to have to create, out of the piece we cut earlier, something for the lid to rest on. We need to make it 16 mil down. So once we've found our spot there, we'll need to drill a pilot hole in the centre of that piece. So now we will need to put that countersink back in. So now it's time to put the hinge on for this lid so that we can easily get it to go up and down from the edge. So we'll measure into there and that gives us our edge that we're going to put it on. So we now have our lid with a hinge. Time to put some holes in this bad boy. So we'll start on this side and on the top there. You make this hole any size you like. I like the measurement of 60 mil. Just put a mark on all sides. Now you can draw a line directly through those. If we just use our square like that, we can create a nice square line. 
Makes it real easy using a square. So we have a nice square inside our square there. To create a curve in the corner, so I'm just gonna move that into the corner of my square and then I'm gonna make a line around there and that's gonna be the line I'm gonna follow. So now we have a nice square with curved corners. All we now need to do is be able to cut this out, drill a hole somewhere in that, next to that line, so that we can put our jigsaw blade in and just start cutting all the way around. Line this drill bit up with the edge of where one of your cuts that you're going to do. Just drill it all the way through. And now you'll be able to see that my jigsaw blade will be able to slot straight in there. So it gives me my starting point. There we go. Now I have one box with a hole in it. And then once you've done the top, you'll have one for the top and one for the other side. Now we need to create a filter for all that light to come through and be nice and bright and make our object look really cool. In order to do this, we're going to create a filter screen on every side of those holes. We're going to get some 3mm MDF. What we need to do is create a 450mm square in this piece of timber. So it is 900 long, so we'll get two pieces out of it. So pretty much two cuts and we'll get our nice square pieces. Line it up, make sure I double check it lines up with my line. If it does, go ahead and cut. Ready to go again. And there we have our two pieces of 450 by 450, exactly the same size, ready to go to become our filter. All we're now gonna do is replicate the same hole that we've got in the side of our light box, do the squares, do the rounded corners, and then we'll use a jigsaw to cut it out. We need to put some tissue paper over the side of these to filter our light so that our light will come through, be filtered through the tissue paper. We're gonna use white today. We could use a pink, you could use a green, depending on what tone you wanted for your photography inside the box. I've got a cordless glue gun here, which has been lovely heating up. I think the best way to do this is to put it on, line it up. We don't really need glue all the way around every edge. Okay, so now we have our filter with our filter paper on there. We need it to stick up against the side of our box. The best thing I find to do is you can buy these little Velcro tabs at Bunnings and they just stick on. So you peel it back off, stick it on there, stick the other side on there, and then you can line your filter box up. The other part that I've done, I got a bit busy uh, with the white spray paint and I sort of sprayed all in here. But what you'll see here is a piece of cardboard. I've cut this to the exact width of here, which we know is 450. All I did here, was just Velcro it on, so that I can Velcro it on. Then we don't want it to go right in the corner, we just want it to round out there like that, so that you don't see the corner in your photo. These cool little LED lights might be able to light your light box up. We have a focal ring on the front, so if we want to focal in or out, a bit more of a spotlight, I reckon that's the way to go. And then depending on what you're doing, you might have natural light coming through, might be enough, but we can always add some more of these. Well, thanks for sticking with me. This light box is ready to go, ready to take photos of those cool items you have or those things you might want to sell. And uh, hopefully I've given you a few tips and tricks along the way. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.